Let's talk about art. So most people describe art's purpose as to make someone feel an emotion or translate a subject and basically communicate what the artist felt or how the artist feels to the viewer. So how do you even communicate through art? I see it as a couple of different ways. Um, a lot of art, interactive art now, uses the senses. So it's a lot more than visual art, um, than like the traditional paintings in a gallery. Um, they're more interactive. There's auditory art and there's sensory art that you can touch and feel. Because the senses in art are much more than just seeing a piece. Um, there's auditory art that is actually really good for viewers who are blind who usually feel left out of the art community and one auditory artist is Stefan Vitello and he makes um, auditory art so art that you can hear and just hear and then there is sensory art which are different pieces that you can touch and feel and one really great example of this with um, interactive art and the human body is Yoko Ono's cut piece where the viewers would touch and cut her clothes. So over the course of history through art, we've been able to communicate and connect with other human beings. But now we're discovering a time where we connect with things that aren't human, machines. So a lot of people just see being able to communicate with machines through code. Um, and we also are able to communicate mi with machines through controls. So we have the control through code and through different controlling systems, just like a video game, because video games are art. And these are different ways that we can communicate with other artists or other people through the internet and through machines um, is this way. One example of interacting with another piece of art and communicating these ideas through machines is um, Evolve by Christina Somer. So this shows their ideas of evolution and how we should see evolution and how in one way we can experience evolution which naturally doesn't happen in one person's lifetime. And they did this through a piece of art um, that is interactive and it can be found on the internet through machines. So they were not able to do this without the use of machines and without the help of machines to communicate their own ideas. Humans communicate with machines and through machines with other humans in one way, but how do machines communicate back to us? A lot of people, a lot of um, contemporary artists try to like push the boundaries of technology and see if you know, AI software and different software can communicate to us with their own genuine feelings and ideas, although machines aren't human. So machines can control and communicate with us by controlling what we see. So there are different machines that limit what a viewer can see, even on the internet, like sight blockers. That is how a machine communicates to us. Using this idea of a machine controlling what we see, which is usually what a human and an individual controls for themselves, um, Eduardo Kack used this idea for the rara avis, which is called a rare bird. And so in this piece, he put humans in the point of view of a bird and it was in a bird's cage. So you could move your head around and you could look around, but you were in the body and in the perspective of a bird and you couldn't move around, you couldn't, you were controlled by the machine and what you saw and what you hear. And that was con wasn't was controlled by you as a being, it was controlled by the machine that was supposed to act like a bird. And other artists like Kenneth Feingold has tried to make, create AI that communicate their ideas and their feelings more directly um, by having different um, conversations with humans. So he has um, 
a lot of different art pieces using the same theme and idea and a lot of the same materials that are um, akin to mannequin heads that can talk and have their own ideas. He does not program them to say exactly what they're saying. He programs them to express their feelings and they often do this by modeling their conversations after humans' conversations. <laughs> so throughout history, how has art changed? Of course, art changes the mediums that it's um, done in. It used to be through sculpture, through paint, and we still have those mediums, but now it's done through computers and different materials. And using computers makes art a lot more accessible to everyone. When art used to, in history, only be for um, people of high status, so high religious people like priests and the Pope or the rich. So a lot of art was just used to create art for the rich and for um, the purchase of them, but now it's for everyone. So a lot of galleries, a lot of online showings of art is, is accessible to everyone. So a lot of the art subjects have changed. They're not only about living in the rich, um, having all this pomp and things. So they have changed. So they're more accessible. The ideas are more accessible and what they communicate are different subjects. Art um, has always been used for expression, but they've been used for the expression of the extravagance of the rich, and now they're used for the expression of different ideas. And a lot of art movements have coincided with different revolutions, different wars, and art just further um, accelerates how we can communicate our feelings other than words. So often art and communication go hand in hand and we can communicate through art and through machines in an artistic way and we can also communicate with other people through art. And that's one of the most important things um, for art.